Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the world's best investing podcast. I just finished reviewing Rocket Lab's Q2 2025 earnings report, and my main takeaway is that this company is on a good path to becoming a constellation provider and owner. At the moment, Rocket Lab makes money once every single time it launches an electron rocket with a payload on behalf of a third party. This rocket is not reusable, so this is yielding unity economics, which are not yet quite attractive. But one of the main takeaways from Q2 2025 is that the Neutron platform is seemingly close to being fully operational. And so this platform is interesting because every single, the Neutron rocket has a payload, which is roughly 43 times bigger than the Electron one. And it's reusable. So just three Neutron launches promise to yield as much revenue as all Electron launches yearly at the current cadence. This by itself is going to improve, promises to improve Unity economics considerably on the launch side. But then simultaneously, Rocket Lab is actually getting ready to deploy and operate its own constellations, both for itself, so proprietary and on behalf of customers. So this quarter, they talked about a bunch of assets, which they are acquiring. One of them is Geost, Geost which specializes in missile tracking satellites. And then another one, which they've been talking about for a number of quarters is Minaric, Minaric perhaps, which specializes in laser-based communication. You will see that the blue line, which is revenue, plotted on the right axis, has grown quite healthily since 2021. What this shows you is that these guys can operate. Firstly, they can launch a platform as they did with the Electron One. They can operate it and they can optimize it over time. As further evidence that they can actually optimize a platform, look at the next graph, which is the gross profit margin in the TTM. 12 trailing months, and it's been going up quite nicely, converging all the way from the very negative domain to a quite a healthy uh, gross margin at present. So this shows you these guys have the process power that I was pointing to in my original deep dive. They really have it. And so therefore, if I have to assign odds, how likely is it that these guys are able to deploy the Neutron platform, operate it successfully, so to drive additional top line and then optimize it, so to improve margins? I'd say it's pretty high because they've demonstrated to have process power. What I see here is the same blueprint as in Iron and potentially companies like Rivian and Appcelera and companies like that that I'm studying. But if I had to compare this apples to apples right now, I think this is looking a little bit like an Iron kind of play. Iron is doing well and cash from operations has converged into the positive domain, largely because the, the blueprint they have enables them to print data centers very efficiently and be able to cater for a large demand on the other side of the equation. Here, what I think these guys have, by nature of a similar vertical integration, is an analogous blueprint. So these guys have a blueprint which enables them to, as I was saying, launch, operate, and optimize platforms. Therefore, by the nature of this new platform, it's a much bigger rocket. It's reusable. The space systems part of the operation is doing well. The margin is actually quite healthy. I can't rem remember the actual uh, number for this quarter, but it's converging into a very healthy domain. I think that it's very likely we see a rapid improvement in Rocket Lab's unit economics over the next two to three years because stuff does take time in this industry. This is highly complex. The passing grade for a rocket is 10.1 out of 10. Uh, you can't do seven and a half or eight as maybe you can do on pure software plays in which you can just iterate. So I think that this company is positioned for an inflection point, a big one, over the next two to three years. Then simultaneously, I quite like the founder, as I was saying, I think this company has extraordinary process power, and this tends to be a reflection of an extraordinary founder operator. And I believe that the space industry long term is going to get quite big because we have an abundance of resources out there, and we just have to figure out how to mine them. We're going to see an explosion in defense, in defense with the Golden Dome that Trump uh, is promoting recently. And these guys have a unique vertical integration, which I think is going to be quite robust. So if you think about this company long term, why might it be an attractive investment? Why actually I'm looking at it? Because of this blueprint that enables them to launch, operate, and optimize uh, rocket platforms and by extension constellations. If you project that out 10, 15, 20 years, what I think you end up with is with much bigger platforms with much better unit economics and essentially a company that's much, much bigger and solves a massive volume of acute customer pains in space in a way that's uh, hard to replicate. 
that's what you see. That's what you have when, when a company executes on this sort of blueprint. There is no guarantee, but you can just see, you can see it in the DNA of the company. So what I'm doing here, as I think I've mentioned this a bunch of times, this is a little bit of an intersection between venture capital and public markets. And so you have to be looking at the organizational traits, the qualitative ones, which some, it's actually quite simple. You don't have to get too deep into the details. But if, if you go back to the, that blue line that I was just showing you with the top line growing healthily, the margins growing healthily, while the company is investing in something that's quite uh, impossible it sort of, and sort of defies operational odds, I think you have a company with, with extraordinary process power. So I'm quite bullish this company. Uh, I'm not buying this just yet. I'm sort of, I continue to study this as I do with other companies that I think could eventually go into sort of smaller more venture capital like kind of portfolio. When I bought Palantir and Spotify big, that I would say was also an intersection between venture capital and public markets, but they were producing a lot of cash from operations and everyone was very depressed about these companies. So in terms of the stage of the life cycle, they were later, much later. Uh, here I'm venturing to sort of earlier stage ventures. That's a bit of a redundancy, but you know what I mean? It's a little bit more venture capital like and and so I think that um, I think this company could do quite well. One of the quotes that I liked from co-founder and sorry, not co-founder, founder and CEO Peter Beck during the call was the following. He said, "And we've been able to bring down electron costs dramatically, right? And that's without reusability. So we have a track record of successfully kind of scaling and bringing down costs, as we've talked about many many times. Another big influence to gross margins." is overhead absorption, obviously. So I suspect that Neutron will be a little bit different, but not fundamentally different from the fact that what's going to drive its gross margins is going to be cadence. So it's really that simple. It's a matter of how likely do you think it is that these guys are able to just print platforms and operate them and optimize them such to increase the top line, increase um, margins, and eventually print cash. So if you, if you, look, if you go back to the to the graph in which I was showing you cash from operations, which is the, I'm going to put it up on the screen now, cash from operations, orange line on the screen plotted on the left, together with CapEx, which is the purple line, also plotted on the left. It's negative, but not so much, given the complexity of what they are doing. So what I infer from such timid, negative cash from operations, given this sort of gargantuan task is that the blueprint really works. I don't know for sure, but I suspect it it's a little bit like iron printing positive cash from operations. If they didn't have a blueprint, the, the cash from operations would be negative, whatever you want it to be. But this is sort of a mild minus uh, 100 and uh, something. I don't know the exact number, but it's pretty mild. And so what this shows you is that if they do launch the Neutron platform successfully, this company is going to print cash. And as they continue compounding on this organizational advantage, to uh, leverage plat platforms, I think it could, it could get much, much bigger. Now, what has to happen for me to invest in this? I need to continue uh, seeing them execute. I'm not in a rush. I have a wonderful portfolio and it's obviously been a, a bunch of wonderful years, but I continue studying this. This is an interesting exercise looking at companies like Rocket Lab, Iron and Rivian and stuff in that I think at least one of these three, I think is gonna be a giga winner. I'm actually pretty convinced over the next few years. And so it's interesting that, as I said, when I bought into Spotify and Palantir, they were venture capital like bets, but at much later stages. What happens is if you can catch one of these guys, one of these companies at a much earlier stage, the reward is just insane, right? So it's whatever amount of time you spend honing your skills to spot these winners earlier, I think is very well spent. So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to continue studying Rocket Lab, Iron, ASTS next, uh, Rivian, HelloFresh even, there's sort of fascinating scenarios where I think you have very, very smart founders and, and they're building blueprints, which are going to enable them to just print assets, which are infinitely valuable, valuable in the new and modern economy. So guys, thank you very much for joining me. If you want to go read the written form of the update, you have that for free in the blog. Thank you very much for joining me. As I was saying, if you enjoyed this update, could you please share this with one friend to, whom you think will enjoy it? These deep dives and updates are for free. And so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance. Take care and see you next time.